Do you need to fix torn drywall paper? Then you need to watch this. On this project, the homeowner removed the baseboards without scoring the top. So it peeled up the drywall paper. As you can see, it's brown. And I'm going to have to prime that and then skim it out. Here's a closer look. It's just kind of flapping. If you just mud over that, it's going to bubble and blister. So there's a step you have to take before you do any mud work. It also can happen if you do wallpaper removal. There's definitely potential to peel up the drywall paper, especially like on this project. They did not seal the raw drywall below where a chair rail was. And the homeowners, when they removed the wallpaper, it just tore up the drywall. So what I'm going to do is on this project, I'm going to have to go ahead and peel off some of the wallpaper and then hit it with a special primer before I do any mud work as well. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to show you the exact products you need to use. This stuff is unbelievable. It's a, it's latex and it's great for um, sealing brown paper. Like if somebody, I've got a video where I went to a house and they pulled, they were getting tile and they pulled all their baseboard off without scoring the top. So it pulled the paper off the drywall. Okay, so the first thing you gotta do is remove anything that got pulled, blistered, lifted. I got a really sharp six inch drywall taping knife that I can just go along and scrape. But if you don't have a sharp knife like this, you need to take a razor knife and score just above wherever the drywall paper has been torn or lifted. Be sure to remove all the old caulk too. If you do not use the primer sealer, you are going to have blistered up joint compound, no doubt about it. You have to do that. The way to avoid this was to score the top of the baseboards before removing them. This guards that I'm going to be using also seals up after wallpaper removal, uh, chalky flat paint. It seals even a popcorn sealant. If you were going to paint it, you can prime it with this. So it's a great primer sealer for pretty much any situation on the interior of a home. Again, you want to remove anything that's pulling off of it. But once you put the sealer primer on, it's going to lock down all the paper real good no blisters okay so here's a closer look at the can of guards problem surface sealer which can be purchased at your favorite big box store paint store or even on amazon i'll leave a link down in the description to my amazon store i'm using a small whizzy roller also known as a hot dog roller or cigar roller and a small paint tray to go around and hit these areas with the guards you can also use a paintbrush to apply it to the brown paper area. Just be very aware that it's kind of watery, so don't put too much of the guards on your roller or brush, or you might have a big mess. Let me know in the comments if you're a DIYer, a contractor, painter, handyman. Just kind of curious. Again, you just want to roll this out evenly, and then you're going to need to let it dry probably for two to four hours before you can apply the joint compound. So what you need to do is use the guards and it seals it and locks that brown paper underneath the gray paper of drywall. If you don't do that, anytime you put joint compound or paint on it, it's gonna bubble up. People get so frustrated. Yes, oil-based kills will work for sealing that up, but not as good as the guards. The guards made by Zinzer is like unbelievable for that. So definitely use the guards. It's also good for wallpaper removal. So yeah, wallpaper removal, a lot of times uh, it's hard to get the glue off or when you pull the wallpaper, it peels the uh, drywall paper down to the brown paper. So the guards fixes that to where you can just mud over it. All right, for the wallpaper, I'm gonna remove all the debris and loose paper off. And then I'm gonna take the guards and a small whizzy roller and just roll it out 
over all the damaged drywall. Then I'm going to skim coat the lower section and then skim coat the whole wall. So stay tuned for that. Skim coating is a great way to make your walls new again. I'll leave some videos down below in the description and also in the end screen at the end of this video. And stay tuned. I'm going to show you where you can also buy guards and another product that works just as good. There's the finished skim coat. Going to have brand new walls again. The guards is key. Home Depot used to carry that, but I don't know if they do anymore. There's a, another product out there called uh, Pro 999, which does the same thing. And I know that Home Depot and Lowe's sell that. Sherwin Williams used to have a, a sealer. It's called Drywall Conditioner. So you might be able to get some there as well. But the guards, I do have it in my Amazon Influencer store. I'll pull that up and show you. And also, you can go there just to see the information and what these products do. I'm kind of giving you a, a quick rundown on what they do. But there's more information on these products. So I'll pull that up. Sh I'll share the link and we'll go from there on that. And pull up my store. It's an affiliate link through Amazon, my influencer store. I get a small commission and nothing sits back on you or you don't pay more. It's the same price as it would be. Yeah, so here's the store. Here's the guards. Here's the Pro 99.9 RX35, which is just like the guards. I also have a plaster weld. If you're gonna be using a joint compound, doing repairs or something over a plaster, you want to go ahead and use this product, the plaster weld, because there's different compounds within plaster and that's going to seal it up. I've got asbestos test kits. Like if you're working on something that was built before 1982, you want to test it for asbestos and lead. But asbestos, they stopped making it in the U.S. or putting it in paint or popcorn. Popcorn ceilings are notorious. They stopped putting the asbestos in in 1978, but the manufacturers were allowed to make a backstock, which took about two, three years to get rid of. I just say 1982 to be safe. So you never want to disturb a popcorn ceiling that was applied before 1982. Uh, we also have a lead test kit. You always need to check that. If you're, if a house has plaster, you definitely need to test for lead paint because that's was in all the paint. Also before 1978, there was a good chance that there could be lead. Back in the day, they used the lead based paints for trim. A lot of door frames, doors, and baseboards have that. Got the knockdown texture sponge for small repairs. Got plenty of videos of that. I've got the Lexan knockdown tool. I've got the patches six by six that I used in that uh, I punched the wall video. If you haven't watched that video, there are some crazy comments in the how to repair a hole punch in the wall video. I've got tools, walk boards, green glue for soundproofing, 20 minute mud. These receptacle patches are awesome if you do miscuts or anything. Super easy to use. Heat guns, compressors, hoppers, the Delco banjo. I've got everything you need. Here's the roller nap that I use to roll on skim coat. So go check out my Amazon influencer store. And if you want to catch the next video or any of my upcoming videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button now in the center of the screen to keep up with all my videos. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'll leave some of my most popular video links down below in the description. Thanks so much for watching.